is how would you describe uh, your kind of relationship to to the outdoors? Because you, uh, there's a little dichotomy that you illustrate for us, where you you love the outdoors and you love exercise, but there are also certain elements of like the the wild man life um, that you know you don't take to as much. You have a story about how um, you love fishing, but you don't want to hook any fish. Right. Yeah. Um, which is a, a very pathetic, loving thing of, of you, yeah. yes. Um, but yeah, how, how did your relationship with kind of being out in nature kind of grow? What, what's your yeah. draw to it? Well, I was born and brought up in, in uh, Dumfries and Galloway in, in a, a, a very rural area uh, in the grounds of a castle. I think there's some pictures there uh, when I'm quite young. And you can see Kenmuir Castle, and um, there's a big loch, Loch Ken, uh, a big, big lake. And um, used to go fishing there with my brother and, and friends of the family. And uh, yeah, it kind of traumatized me when I caught a fish. Because I'm like, this is great, I've caught a fish. Oh no, I have to kill it. Oh God. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I would go, and I guess this is maybe the beginning of my acting, where I would go, not put any bait on the hook, <laughs> and sit for hours, and I was happy playing a fisherman. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. Don't and, have kids like me. <laughs> yeah. And your mother drove you to and from, and all the while, yep. she knew. Uh, I think fishing. she kind of knew, because you didn't catch anything. No, nope. yeah. no. Damn, they got off the hook. But um, no, there were a couple of times I did, but uh, yeah, it's something that um, I don't know. I don't know why, but anyway, I love the, I do love the outdoors. This is sort of um, in the solitude. There's this, it gives me a thrill. I don't know, I don't know why. Um, so I used to obviously play outdoors as a child. And I think that definitely, maybe that um, imagination, it's, it's, it's helped my imagination. So I used to pretend uh, I was, you know, whatever, the King of Scotland or Robert the Bruce or King Arthur or, or whatever. And, and that would be my escapism um, whilst sitting on the side of a loch with an empty fishing rod. Yeah. And you were a Cub Scout? I was. Uh, but you say in the book you were really just in it for the badges. Oh, always the badges, yeah. You got all the badges, you got to sew them on. Didn't really like the sport aspect. Mm -hmm. Again, I think it's like I love doing things on my own. Um, <laughs> and when it comes to team sport, not really a team player, um, so yeah. What was the best badge? What was the? Ah, uh, ah. Uh, there was obviously you get all your green badges, but there was like an in-between badge which was like fluorescent yellow. I think it was for like sewing or something, <laughs> like knitting or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good skill to have. It's a great skill, yeah. Uh, so the hike is really a framing device here in this book to yes. to explore um, the waypoints in your actual life right. um, and, and your career. And one of the things sort of early on that you've already uh, talked about was uh, the fact that your father had left um, when you were 18 months old. And, mm -hmm. and that story, as we see a glimpse of it, of it throughout, you know, has a lot of hubris, um, not hubris, a pathos to it. And it has a lot of hubris. hubris. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was a lot of hubris for me to try and use the word pathos, and I <laughs> fucked it up. Um, Harsh. <laughs> But, uh, That'd but be a the, great quote on the book. Wouldn't it? <laughs> a lot of hubris. <laughs> uh, but uh, the thing that I want to talk to you about was your mother, because yes. uh, your mother is, first of all, a fantastic woman, great lady. Thank you. Um, based on what's in this book, um, you know, she's a single mom. You see, you talk about how she really uh, built a life for you where you didn't feel like you were wanting. And if when another child asks you where your dad is, it's mm. not a hurtful question. It's just like, I don't know. Right. Um, and it wasn't a big deal for you. But, but one thing in particular that struck, uh, struck me is that she also seemed to be a creative soul. Yeah. Um, and that she was able to kind of revisit and embrace as you were growing older. How much of that did, did you get from her directly? In, in yeah, her? yeah. It's an interesting one, isn't it? Because we grow up, we kind of don't want to be our parents, right? And we're like, <laughs> anything to be like them. And then you start to see, you do start to have their characteristics. And, and not only that, you, I don't know, it's, it's, it's interesting. So I didn't meet my father from my uh, memory uh, until I was in my mid-late 20s. Um, and he appeared, and I, I think it's in the book, and I uh, was doing a play at the time. Um, and the night before one of the nights, I just got this message and he's like, I wanna meet you before the play. Uh, and I didn't really know how to feel about this, but I was like, okay. Uh, and this man appeared and I, you know, 
had no real idea what he would look like, and I was kind of also trying to stay in the world where I was about to go on stage. I was trying to sort of, you know, very compartmentalize everything. And um, we went for a walk. We were in Stirling, actually, uh, the university, which is a very beautiful place. And it gave me a doctorate as well, so thanks. <laughs> but um, no, and we were walking together. And I thought, this, this man, I don't know who this man is. He's a stranger, pretty much, to me. Um, however, as we were walking together, I realized we had exactly the same walk. And I don't know how to describe my walk. It's a bit goofy. I think I've got big feet. It's a bit like, I don't know like this. And I just realized that we just had the same gait, the same walk, the same movement pattern. And it's very odd that, you know, that he's had zero bearing, but I guess even that genetic thing is, is similar. But, um, but I also grew up thinking I never want to be like my father. I never want to have a family or leave like he left me or, or to be this kind of man. But, um, but actually, in a way, I guess I'm putting it to bed because he, he's made me who I am, you know, even the absence of him has made me who I am. Uh, and I feel very fortunate, and I guess because of my mother, you know, she uh, brought us up uh, and looked after us and eventually sent me to a Steiner school, which is, uh, I think you guys call it Waldorf here, uh, which is a very creative school. Um, and at the time, I went because there were some pretty girls in the class, and uh, it looked like I could get away with doing very little work. Um, <laughs> But it was an incredible place, and it really instilled in me that, like, that creativity. And I think a lot of my mom's creativity is definitely rubbed off. Yeah. You also mentioned a, a brother who is really the outdoorsman. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. the way you frame him. Has he, uh, has he hiked the, the West? Has he hiked the West Highland Way? Has he? Has he? <laughs> no, he hasn't. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Well, well, well. Uh -huh. No, so, I mean, uh, yeah, again, I guess, again, you know, I'm the one who's playing the character of the, <laughs> the outdoorsman, and he is the one. He's, um, he works in, in a, for a mountain biking company. He has, all, he's always outdoors, all the time, uh, hiking, cycling, um, and I'm doing it, pretending to be that guy. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's the practical one. You 